الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره ونسأله الكرامة فيما بعد الموت لنا ولجميع المؤمنين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وبعد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في الكتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون وقال في آية أخرى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثير من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يقتب بعضكم بعضا يحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب الرحيم وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمد وقال في حديث الآخر عن فضل ابن عبيد رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال المجاهد من جاهد نفسه أو في رواية أخرى من جاهد هواه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers, dear sisters, youth, children, and esteemed elderly, today is Rabiul Thani, 9th, 1444, Hijri. During last month, we have discussed much on the topic of how Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our role model, guided us to be kind, merciful, to cooperate with each other, not to see faults with each other, but rather to see blessings that God Almighty has given to us. To focus on positives, not negatives. During those discussions, I've had many people communicating with me in person or texting or emailing. And many of them spoke about one social evil, virus, pandemic, in the societies that spreads so much in person and on online. Evil that is widespread. In Islam, it's forbidden. It's one of the major sins. It's a sin of our tongues. Sin that has huge consequences. In dunya, and in the Akhirah. It's called backbiting. al ghiba There is something close to it, or more dangerous than it. It's buhtan, slender. And something that also is similar to backbiting like ghiba It's called namima, or gossip. Buhtan, and Namima will talk, insha'Allah, another time. Today we would focus on ghibah, back biting, pandemic of the society. Imam al-Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, 12th century Muslim philosopher, theologian, jurist. When he spoke about Islam, or religion in general, he said there are two dimensions of deen. First dimension is related to doing good deeds. 
And second dimension is avoiding evil deeds or working against or fighting our own lower nerves or hawa, our desires. Many of us think that avoiding evil deeds or fighting over nafs is easy. It's very challenging. It's much more difficult than doing good deeds. Most of the people can do good deeds. But only elites can fight their nafs. Only elites can defeat their nafs. Those are people who are called muttaqun. Conscious, aware, mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason why our Prophet, peace be upon him, as reported by Fadala ibn Ubayn, radiyallahu anhu, he said, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mujahidu man jahada nafsah, aw fi riwayati ukhra, man jahada hawa. Real mujahid, true mujahid, is one who is able to fight his own nafs, his own passion, his, own, his or her own desires. People who are able to fight their hawa. One of the ways how we can fight ourselves, my brothers and sisters, is by guarding our tongues. What is interesting is when you browse through some of the ahadith, Muhammad وسلم, is addressing believers, people of faith. Why he would address people of faith? To protect themselves against evils of tongue. We assume that people of faith would not engage themselves into such hurumat, into such evils. Yet, Muhammad وسلم, is telling us, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. One who believes in Allah and believes that one day he or she will come in front of Allah on the day of judgment, فَلْيَكُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ يسمد. Should say that what is good or otherwise keep quiet. Should not engage himself or herself in any evils with their tongues. This is a quite, quite obvious reminder to the believers of the seriousness that our tongues can cause. As well as this, about our accountability of taking care of our tongues. And among some of these dangers of tongues is al ghibah backbiting. And backbiting, inshallah, I will define it, but in a nutshell, it means speaking about others in their absence. When people are not present, we sometimes talk with our friends about others. And Prophet, peace be upon him, has cautioned us about it. He cautioned his companions. In the hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, recorded in Muslim, hadith as sahih he asked companions, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْغِيبَةِ do you know what is backbiting? They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and the Prophet know the best. Then he told them, Dhikruka akhaka bima yakrahu. To mention your brother or a sister with, with something that they are not happy with. To mention. Your, your brother or a sister with something they are not comfortable with. And then they said, ya Rasulullah, in kana fi akhi ma akul. But what if, if it is true what I am talking and it is present in my brother or my sister? What then? He said, in kana fihi ma takul faqadik tabda. If there is that what you say about him or her, then you have backbitten him or her. However, 
وَإِنَّمْ يَكُنْ مَا تَقُولْ If there is no something with him or her, what you are saying, فَقَدْ بَهَدْتَهُ You have slandered him or her. Subhanallah. You have slandered him or her. In another narration, recorded in Musnad, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Hadith Hassan. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was talking about ghiba to the companions, they said, but Ya Rasulullah, we only said what is true about that person. We only said what is true. And Prophet, peace be upon him, cautioned and warned. فَحَسْبُكَ إِذَا ذَكَرْتَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا فِيهِ It is enough of a sin that you mention bad, bad things about your brother or your sister. It's enough. And then he continued. إِنْ قُلْتُمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِيهِ فَقَدْ بَهَدْتُمُ But if you do not, as pointed in the first hadith recorded by Muslim, if you say something that is not in him or her, then certainly you have done even greater sin. So Giba, my brothers and sisters, could be defined in the following way. A person mentions the faults of the other in their absence, which, of course, they would not like to be mentioned. And if there is no need for that to be mentioned. These are four conditions. So basically, riba would be if a person mentioned faults of others with exclusions, if they mentioned something good about them, there is no problem. Or if they mention something that they will not mind to be mentioned. But if they mention in absence something that is not good, then it is considered, of course, ghiba. But if it is mentioned in the presence, most of Muslim scholars say it is not considered ghiba. However, we have to be very careful of not creating chaos and not creating fitna in those discussions. We have to be wise in a way how we interact and how we talk. And the last condition is, if there is no need to mention, what do we need? What do we mean by this? If there is no danger to mention. Example, if a person is dangerous for the community, if a person is dangerous for the society, if a person is a risk. I had cases where people would ask me for a reference in marriage and I will not give that reference because I know certain things about people. So I don't want to give re good reference. I cannot give good reference if I know that people have faults. Faults that could be detrimental for marriage. In terms of business too, if a person asks, I would like to partner with this person and I know certain matters that are not accepted in our faith, that are not accepted in normal human relations, I will not be able to give the reference. That's exactly what Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us with. Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his tafsir, in Surah Hujurat, verse 12, very clearly outlined that ghiba is forbidden, it's haram in our deen. And this is also consensus of Muslim scholarship. Ya yuhaladina amanu, amanu chtanibu kathira min afdan. All you who believe, again, all people of faith, all people who have made that contract with Allah with your shahada. You know, avoid much of suspicions. Some of those suspicions are sin. Do not spy on each other. And do not backbite about each other. And, and then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes severity of, of this act. Do not 
Would you like to eat that flesh of your own brother or a sister? That's how challenging and difficult that sin is. Sin is. Do you like to eat that flesh of your brother or a sister? Wattakullah. Be mindful of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives some good news. Inna Allah tawabur rahim. You can make tawbah to Allah. And that is the reason why Imam Qurtubi and other Imams are telling us that scholars agree that ghibah is a major sin for which we need to make tawbah. Not only asking brother or a sister to forgive us, but we also ask, need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. What are some of these dangers then of ghibah? First of all, as we pointed out, it's forbidden, it's haram. It's a major sin. Major sin that could lead us into punishment in grave and the hereafter. Hadith from Abu Dawood when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went for Mi'raj and he saw a group of people who have been punished severely. This hadith has been narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu. And then when Prophet peace be upon him saw this, he asked Jibreel, who are these people? And Jibreel explained, هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ لَخُومَ النَّاسِ وَيَقْعَوْنَ فِي أَعْرَاضِهِمْ These are the people who are backbiting. They are eating flesh of people. They are backbiting. And they are stepping on the honor and dignity of people. Furthermore, Riba, my brothers and sisters, impacts on loss of our deeds on the day of judgment. When people backbite, they are in impacting their records. As Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, In kana lahu amalun salih, ukhida minhu biqadari, biqadari mazlamatin. If people would have good deeds, it would be taken from their good deeds, from, the, from their records, and would be transformed or would be given to victims of theirs according to the mavlama, to the wrongs that they have done. So many of us would come and we will come in front of Allah and we will say, but where are my prayers? Where is my zakat? Where is my charity? And then we will be shown into our record and how it was depleted because of our wrong deeds. So brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is that riba is not the matter that we should take lightly. Hassan al-Basri, rahmatullahi alayhi, one of the first, or from the first of generation after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa very much spiritually profound, guided us in this regard. He was once told, you have been backbiting Hassan about me. And Hassan, rahmatullahi alayhi, he told him, you have not reached such a position that you can control my hasanat. You have not come to that level that you are able to control my hasanat. Basically, he was telling him, I will not allow myself to get engaged into backbiting. I know the dangers of backbiting. So you will never see me backbiting people around. Actually, in another, in another record, uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khadimi reported, that a man said to Hassan al-Basri, Indeed, someone was backbiting about you, Hassan. So what he did? He prepared a dish of sweet dates to the backbiter, and he delivered it to him. And he told him, I heard that you have given me your hasanat. I heard that you have given me your good deeds. So I came here to repay you. But please forgive me, I haven't been able to repay you as I was supposed to. So what I brought you, it's a gift, but really for what you have given to me, I will never be able actually to fully compensate it for. Telling him that you have put yourself in a danger. My, my brothers and sisters, as I suggested, we must realize that 
or words carry huge weights. We should never talk, we should never take over, over words lightly. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna la'abda la yatakallamu bil kalima min rudwani Allah la yulqi laha baalan yarfa'u Allahu biha darajah. That indeed a sermon may speak a word pleasing to Allah, thinking uh, nothing of it, not being big deal of it. Yet by it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises his or her status by a degree. And then he said, وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَهْبِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمِ Verily, a servant may speak a word depleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking nothing of it. Yet, by it, he would plummet himself in the hell. On this point, it is important to remind ourselves of the beautiful guidance of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how we need to deal with this uh, spiritual pandemic, spiritual disease. An Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqala, لا يبلغني أحد على أحد من أصحابي شيئا سبحان الله سبحان الله Let no one of you mentions anything bad to me about my companions Do not come to me and, many think, and mention nothing about any of my companions That's what Prophet peace be upon him said Reason فَإِنِّي أَحَبُّ أَنْ أَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا سَلِيمُ الصَّدْرِ For I love to meet them while my heart is at peace. I don't want to think about what you have told me about them. I don't want that to impact my thoughts, my feelings, my relationships about them. So my brothers and sisters, غِيْبَة being forbidden, being major sin, being a sin that can impact our place, maqam, in paradise, being a sin that could deplete us from, from our good deeds is certainly something that we should not take lightly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who would strive and struggle against, against this social pandemic in our communities. And we pray to God Almighty to strengthen us, to strengthen our hearts, and strengthen our tongues and keep them on the right path. Alayna ahsan al kalam ya ablagam nizam, kalam Allah al malik al aziz al alam, kima qala Allah tabarak wa taala fi nadm al kalam, wa ida qurya al Quran fastamiu lahu wa ansatu al alif intur hamun, auzu billahi min al shaytan al rajim, bismillah al rahman al rahim, in al dina, in Allah Islam. الحمد لله الحمد لله كاملنا والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شأن شرف صفي فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وعامرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد تهديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب والله يعزك في أن تمك سبوس هو strengthen our Islamic identity to help us help our children strengthen our Islamic identity in this part of the world in this uh, in this age and time Ya Rabbil Alameen we ask of you Ya Rabb to strengthen our hearts strengthen our tongues that we not be of those who will be weak in terms of our sayings in terms of our words but strengthen it that we only say that what is truth Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Aizat Yama Yasifun Wa Salaamu Al Mursaleen Alhamdulillah Inna Allah Ya'muru Bil Adli Wa Al-Iksani Wa Ita Idhil Qurba Wa Yanha Anil Fakshai Wa Al-Munkari Wa Al-Bagh Ya'idhukum La'alakum Tadakkaroon Wa Qimu Salaam